We need to add Bootstrap to our Django project. It's very easy to do. Uh, the fastest way to get there is to go to getbootstrap.com. You can also t Google Twitter Bootstrap, and it will take you to a page like this or this page exactly. Uh, first thing you want to do is download Bootstrap. It's going to download, and you're going to want to unzip it. So after you unzip it, it's going to look like this. So in your downloads, that is essentially what it's going to look like and then it'll unzip and then you'll have these two files here uh, if you have more than that that's okay uh, but you'll definitely have css and javascript now in your django project you want to go to your where your static files are and under static you're going to drag the css or you're going to drag the css and javascript you can copy them by holding down alt or you can just drop them over. You don't have to copy them. Um, so there's the CSS. That's a basic start. And then now into your Komodo edit or wherever your Django project is and where you're editing it in, go into your static files. We're going to make a new template. We're going to call this one Bootstrap. New file, call it bootstrap.html. This is a temporary name for it. And then back into Bootstrap, we'll go to Get Started and Basic Template, Few Examples. So basically, we're looking for Bootstrap examples. Uh, pretty simple. I'm going to choose this basic marketing site. I think it's a pretty awesome layout that they have. And it is responsive. So if you change it, it's going to change to the browser side. So that also works with mobile browsers. So if you're on a tablet, uh, that's seven inches or a tablet that's 15 inches it doesn't matter it's going to change the size of it or if you have a tablet or an iphone or a smartphone whatever um, fastest way to do it is we want a view source so every browser is a little bit different but in chrome it's view and then view source or excuse me it's view developer view source some of them you might even be able to just right click or control click and view source from that um, Otherwise, you want to just view the source. Just grab this whole thing, copy it, back into that Bootstrap HTML that we just created. We're going to save that one. And first thing that I want to do is I want to change all of our CSS files. Now, within our settings file, uh, yours might just be settings.py, but in ours, we are going to show you essentially under static this static url is what we want to replace we want to use this static url to replace uh, where this says bootstrap just put it there static we need that and then with all of the javascript which should be which is actually not associated on this one we actually want to associate the javascript too so then we'll do script source not script type, but script source equals to static JavaScript slash bootstrap dot min dot JS. Let's just double check to make sure that that's the name of it. Yep, bootstrap dot min dot JS. Okay. So that's associating the JavaScript. And now I'm going to take the navigation out. I'm going to just go up to right to the beginning of that nav bar right there and then just grab this entire thing cut that out and then i'm going to do include nav bar dot html this will just make it a little bit cleaner so back into our templates we're going to do a new file here and we're going to call it nav bar dot html open that up paste what we just uh, cut save that and we can close out our settings files now and then in container so this is where the main part of your site is going to be so the main body um, now we have a choice here we can do uh, the jumbotron that's going to be this is considered the jumbotron um, we can either put that into a new one or what I like to do is just cut it out and just do 
block Jumbotron and in block. So basically in any template that we want to use going forward, we can just call this Jumbotron block and then add in um, the Jumbotron class, just like that. So that's if we want the Jumbotron even there. If we don't, it's just gonna stay just like this. So now um, we have our footer here and that's actually in the body content. So if we go back into the template, it's actually within the body. It's not a full stretched footer, just like the navigation's a full stretch. So we can leave it in there, but I'm actually gonna take it out and do include footer.html. And of course now in templates, we have to do a new file here, call it footer.html. Open up footer and we'll just do that, paste it in. Okay, so now we have nav bar and footer separated out. And now the main content area, we can just cut this out and do block content. And then we want to end the block as well. Okay, so we have the majority of it set up. The title, we could of course change this to whatever we want. Um, for now, I'm just gonna leave it as is with the exception of adding block title. And this is good for SEO purposes. So on any template that you use, you can use this block title and it will go after whatever you have here or you could put it before it really is your preference. I'm gonna leave it as before. And that is it for the title tag. Um, and so now we do have this custom style sheet here for the Jumbotron. And if we wanna add that one in, we will have to grab it from the source. So going back into the source, we can just click this and we can save this as. We're gonna go into our project. In this case, it's Matchmaker. And we'll go into static, static, CSS, jumbotron.css. And that downloaded it and saved it. Of course, another way to do it would just be copying it, opening a new .css file and all that. But we're not gonna do that. So there's that, That's um, this is our new base file. Uh, it is pretty much ready to go. We can add in a site description here and who the author is. Um, I'll leave that up to you. Um, but that is the basics of getting Bootstrap in and ready as your base file. Of course, there's one last step is to rename our old base file to base old for now. We could even delete it. Um, and then rename bootstrap to base.html. It will still work very well. You can even test it out in your project. Before we test it, we wanna make sure that our database is synced. So do a manage.py sync database. Uh, mine's already synced, everything's installed and ready to go. And then we wanna do a Python managed py and then um, a collect static. And if it's, it's gonna ask you to overwrite your files, you will say yes. Um, of course, you wanna make sure that you actually wanna overwrite them. If you don't wanna overwrite them, if there's certain changes that you're unsure of, don't do it. But that should work. And then if we do a python manage.py run server, and of course, in the background, you already saw that it is pulling through for me. So it does work. And we can change that project name real quick just to show you an example. Um, in our nav bar, project name into matchmaker. Save that, go back into Chrome, refresh, there we go, it works. Now of course there's some padding issues and that has to do with how we actually laid out our base file. Um, so we can change certain things by doing custom CSS of our own. And the way we would do that is just copy this link and we can write custom or whatever name that you want for the CSS. It doesn't have to be custom. 
Uh, that's a little obvious for any designer that's looking at your site. That that's clearly what you changed. So uh, you don't again. You do not have to call it custom, but I will for the sake of example. Um, and in custom, we can go into our inspect element here. Inspect element is very useful in Chrome. There is a version in um, Firefox, but I prefer Chrome's uh, by a lot. So this body content here, if we just did a margin top of like 40 pixels, it will move it right down. So we can just copy that and make sure we grab the body content class. So body content and add that margin top, save it. Remember what we have to do, we have to do a collect static and yes, run the server again. Do a quick little refresh on our page and the um, changes have come through. Um, so the reason we do collect static is because when you end up start working with your static files, there's a good chance that you're not gonna have them in the same location as where your Django project actually is. Um, so collecting the static files puts it into uh, usually a remote server, a different server, or a different location in general, and it's nice and safe. You don't actually put anything in here. You don't manipulate these, these files where it's being collected to. You just allow Django to run collect static to do all that stuff. So um, anyways, that's setting up Bootstrap, and of course there's more things that you can do to manipulate it, but that is the basics of setting up Bootstrap in your Django project.